this is how Ukraine will take back Crimea. Though it won't happen overnight, the recent Swedish announcement that it was gifting 10 CB-90 assault craft to Ukraine is another important step to liberating the peninsula. But what is the CB-90, and more importantly, how will Ukraine use it in the war? The CB-90 is the bread and butter of Sweden's amphibious capabilities. Because the most dangerous part of any amphibious operation is the disembarkation of the troops from ship to shore, the Swedes wanted a highly maneuverable, armored, and weaponized craft that could safely transport approximately half a platoon of Marines, around 21, to shore. Go, go, After years go. of tinkering with several prototypes, the country unveiled the base model in 1991. It displaces over 22 tons with a full combat load of troops, equipment, fuel, and armaments. With a length overall of 52 feet, a beam or width of 12.5 feet, and a draft of just over 2.5 feet, it has a max height of just over 15 feet. The CB-90 is an incredibly compact vessel that can be launched from numerous types of ships, fit under small bridges, and get very close to shore without fear of running aground. However, with such limited space, Swedish engineers needed to maximize every square inch as much as possible. So what is in between the lifelines of this ship? Starting below with the engineering plan is the best way to start here since it differs from most conventional naval vessels. Traditionally, most naval vessels use a standard propeller and rudder system to help propel a ship forward or backward. However, these time-tested systems have several drawbacks, including making the ship less maneuverable at low speeds and easily being fouled in shallow water by underwater hazards like chains, debris, and other underwater objects. The CB-90 solves these shortcomings by having water jet propulsion. On the base model of the CB-90, two Rolls-Royce water jets suck up water through an inlet just underneath the vessel. As the water comes up through the inlet, it gets pushed through an impeller. As it goes through the impeller, the velocity and pressure of the water increase as an incredible volume of water is pushed through a tiny opening in the impeller. This action is what causes the ship to be propelled forward, and the water is then expelled through transoms on the aft end of the water jet. If the ship needs to reverse, the helmsman simply needs to change the engine's RPM for a stern propulsion. When doing this, the reversing bucket will close down on the water as it goes through the impeller. The end result is that the ship will then go backward. Two Scania V8 diesel engines, each capable of 625 horsepower, power these water jets. With this drivetrain, the CB90 can travel up to an astonishing 40 knots. Of course, this also depends on the sea state and how the craft is loaded, but 40 knots even in ideal weather conditions is impressive. At least three personnel are manning the craft. Two officers are in the cockpit, with one steering at the helm while the other commands the craft. The third person is an enlisted sailor whose job is to keep the engines and auxiliary equipment running in the ship's engine room. As for additional personnel, several weapon systems could allow other crew members to be topside when required. On the bow of the ship, there is an integrated weapons mount that can fit two 50 caliber machine guns. These machine guns can be remotely controlled from inside the pilot house. On the sides and stern of the vessel are three other mounts. These stations can accommodate either additional 50 caliber machine guns, 7.62 millimeter machine guns, or an MK-19 automatic grenade launcher. The boat also has rails back aft to deploy up to six depth charges or naval mines. For the passengers, the 21 Marines who can squeeze into the centerline cargo hold exit the ship through a bow ramp up forward. Of course, using the term bow ramp is a little disingenuous since the exit is more like a door that opens upward and the troops have to jump out from the bow onto shore. However, these are just the specifications for the base model. Sweden has produced several other models, including a command vessel with extra communications equipment, an armored version that is airtight to resist chemical and biological attacks, and an export model that can be customized to fit a host nation's weapons, radars, or sensors. But even though this is an incredibly capable platform, the real question is how it compares to its Russian counterpart, the Raptor. Officially known as Project 03160, the Raptor's nickname is fitting given that it is a light, heavily armored, and nimble craft. It also looks like a complete ripoff of the CB-90, though Russia claims that it designed its own craft independent of the CB-90, it's clear that Russia did its best to copy the iconic craft. 
In comparison to the CB90, the Raptor is just slightly larger, coming in at 3 feet longer, about a foot wider, and several inches deeper for its draft. It does have a slightly lower profile, being that it's 3 feet shorter. As far as displacement, with a full combat load of people and fuel, it displaces about half a ton more than the CB90. Also, like the CB90, the Raptor has a three-person crew that can fit 20 Russian Marines or Special Operators in its centerline cargo hold. In another straight copy of the CB90, the Raptor also uses two diesel engines with two water jets. In fact, the Russians also bought their water jets from Rolls-Royce like Sweden did. However, the engines are different. Because Russia struggles to produce efficient and capable military engines for most of its platforms, it outsourced its engines to Caterpillar, an American heavy industry company. Between the American engines, British water jets, and the Swedish design, the only really Russian thing on the whole craft is the weapons. Originally, the Raptor was built with a 12.7mm machine gun and two PKP Pencheng machine guns on the sides. However, a Russian naval parade in August 2022 showed that the Russian Navy has claimed some serious upgrades to the Raptor. Unlike before, the new and improved Raptor, Raptor 2.0, now sports two static Cornet missile launchers on the aft end of the ship. It appears there are eight single-tube launchers with a claimed range of 8 kilometers. The Cornet is a standard Russian anti-tank missile, and its appearance on Raptor indicates it would probably fire it as a direct line-of-sight attack on shore targets as it closes a contested beachhead. In addition to the Cornet launchers, the Russians claim that the Raptor has a new active protection system with self-defense rounds, but do not elaborate. The only self-protection systems the Russians have are the Legacy Arena and rumored replacement the Afghanid. These vehicle-based systems could potentially be integrated on a small ship, but this has not yet been confirmed. Besides this mystery active protection system, the Russians claim that the new Raptor has an automated weapon system that the helmsman can control from inside the cockpit. What weapon could be fired is not clear. The Russians also claim the Raptor 2.0 has a new passive electronic countermeasure system, a supposed laser detection system, and a smokescreen launcher. To accommodate all these extra systems, the Russians say they made the new Raptor slightly larger, now weighing about 30 tons. But to maintain speed at this heavier weight, the Raptor now has more powerful engines that make the craft go upwards of 50 knots, they claim. It is important to note that none of these supposed upgrades have been since Russia is fearful of putting more Raptors into the Black Sea. That's because, within three months of the full-scale invasion starting, Ukraine destroyed four Raptors and heavily damaged two more with man-portable rocket launchers and drones. It's now believed Russia has one or two Raptors left in the Black Sea until they build more, which as of the making of this video, there's not been any confirmed video or photographic evidence of any more Raptors in the Black Sea, much less these supposed new ones. But for argument's sake, let's take these claims at face value. How would the new Raptor compare to the CB90? Fortunately for Ukraine, there have been a lot of upgrades to the CB90 since the 90s, though it has been unconfirmed what model Ukraine will receive. Beginning in 2021, the newest version of the CB90, the CB90 Next Generation, was unveiled. It's slightly larger than the base model and has much more powerful engines. With around 900 horsepower each, the new CB90s can travel in excess of 40 knots, but that's not the only upgrade. Besides the new engineering plant, the new CB90s also have an integrated combat system suite called Trackfire. All new production CB90s come standard with this state-of-the-art system. Although claimed by the Russians, the Swedes have actually produced a remote-controlled gyro-stabilized suite that allows the operator to fire 7.62mm and 50 caliber machine guns and MK-19 grenade launchers remotely. Through a combination of day and night vision cameras, infrared cameras, and other sensors, the weapon system is gyro-stabilized, meaning no matter how the ship is maneuvering, the gun barrels will be pointed in the direction the operator wants to go. Combining this with the heavier armor and more advanced navigation and communication suites, the modern CB-90 is a force to be reckoned with. So long as Ukraine gets the new CB-90s, there can be no comparison to even the claimed improvements on the Raptor 2.0. 
If the new CB90 were compared head-to-head -head with the capabilities of the original Raptor, there's a slight edge to the CB90 due to the fact that Swedish radars, communication suites, and maintenance are better. Not to mention spare parts, which Russia can no longer get for its Western-produced equipment. But how exactly would Ukraine best utilize this first donation of 10 CB90s? If it's not already clear by now, it does go without saying that Ukraine would most definitely not use the CB-90 as a direct surface action platform against other ships. It's not designed for that and probably would not survive an engagement with any large surface combatant. However, the Ukrainians would definitely use the CB-90 in two different ways. The first and most obvious is the battle taxi to ferry Ukrainian troops from shore to shore. The only current place that makes sense for Ukraine to use them right now is in southern Ukraine in the Dnieper River Delta. Currently, Ukraine maintains limited footholds on the Russian side of the river. One of the reasons why Ukraine has had difficulty in expanding these bridgeheads is because of issues resupplying the troops, bringing reinforcements, and evacuating the wounded. Currently, Ukraine uses a hodgepodge of donated small military boats and civilian craft for this purpose. However, these boats are all unarmored for the most part and lightly armed. Having an armored, heavily armed craft like the CB-90 that is also incredibly fast would be the ideal operating environment for it. With its ability to zip in and out of islands, shorelines, and coves along the river, the CB-90 would be the perfect solution to advance Ukraine's goal of expanding its bridgehead on Kyrgyzstan Oblast. Another way Ukraine could use the CB-90 is through insertion of special forces troops behind enemy lines in Kyrgyzstan Oblast and Crimea. Though Ukraine has conducted several direction action raids in the past, these have been met with varying success. Though it seems like Ukraine has not yet had problems extracting its troops, having the CB-90 there would certainly improve the speed, lethality, and success of these missions. However, it is not known what kind of radar cross-section the CB-90 has or its protective measures against missiles. Ukraine was able to easily defeat raptors around Snake Island with drones. It is not a stretch for Russia to do the same. With such limited number of CB-90s, Ukraine will probably want to preserve its combat power to where the CB-90 can move and hide before Russia can fire at it. Bringing it along for an extended raid and being exposed is a risk Ukraine probably won't take. So with all that being said, would the CB-90 have a big impact on the war? As much as there should be a clear answer, the truth is, it depends. As long as Sweden gives its most upgraded versions of the CB-90, the Ukrainian military will have the best chance of success. Providing older CB-90s with fewer weapons, less advanced sensors, and older engines is a recipe for disaster in the high-intensity conflict Ukraine finds itself in. As long as Sweden ensures Ukraine gets the best material available and not just beat up hand-me-downs, along with Ukraine using them smartly to break out of the Kirshen bridgeheads, this vessel could be a game-changer in the war. Bye for now.